today we're going to start building this set out here. Um, if you go back to the previous video, you can see how we got to this point. And uh, now that we are here, we can start adding in all the detail. So we're going to start on the ground plane today. Um, right now we have a three-quarter inch piece of plywood, a two inch piece of bead foam on top of that. We are going to laminate more sheets of foam on top of this and then we'll uh, sculpt and carve a little hill here that the tree sits on. Uh, carve out a little valley that the stilts will sit in and then back to some little mounds in the back right here. Uh, basically, we are going to go from this stage here to this piece here, which is kind of a rough blocking out of the foam landscape. So I've cleared everything off the set and now we can start laminating the sheets of foam. Uh, quick note, I always like to make sure that my sets are built on a, a solid structure, something with a lot of support. So a three quarter inch piece of plywood is great. Um, these sets do kind of take a beating during uh, construction phase and the filming phase. Uh, so it definitely helps to make sure that they are stable. And we are laminating two inch sheets of bead foam together. Uh, something to say about bead foam, I'm not a big fan of it. It is definitely not an environmentally friendly material. Uh, that being said, I pick up sheets of this stuff from construction sites all over the place. It's never like the prettiest foam, but all of this stuff is going to be covered up. So uh, it's a great way to recycle materials and um, not have to spend a lot of money during this phase. So the first thing I do is piece together another layer of foam that I will be gluing on top. A king size sharpie comes in handy for marking up the foam and a Japanese saw is what I use to cut the sheets. You also have to peel off this film that's on both sides of the sheet. Laminating these sheets together just works better if it's foam touching foam. This is what we're going to be using to glue the sheets together. Uh, it's called Great Stuff. You can get it for about six bucks a can at uh, Home Depot. It's kind of meant for filling uh, cracks and gaps on construction projects, uh, but for the purpose of gluing foam together, it's pretty good stuff. So make sure you wear gloves. This stuff gets all over the place. You've got to give it a good shake. Do this for about a minute. It starts to expand as soon as it leaves the can, so you want to sandwich some kind of pressure on the sheets. Here I'm just weighing it down with some sandbags and clamping the edges. Clamping it between two pieces of plywood uh, would work the best. I'm just being a little bit lazy here. Uh, the full cure time of the foam is about eight hours, but in a few hours it'll be set up enough where I could keep playing around with it. I'm not actually going to start carving until tomorrow. Next I put the puppets back on the set and sketch out the topography. This will give me an idea of where I need to add more foam. I could add a whole nother sheet on the top here, but it'll actually be easier if I build this up with smaller pieces. For one, it'll be a lot less material that I'll have to carve away. But the main reason is it's going to be a lot less of a mess to clean up afterwards. As soon as I start filing and carving this thing, there's going to be bead foam everywhere. So same as before, I spray the foam down and clamp the pieces together. And this time I do sandwich them between two pieces of wood. A couple things to note here. One, when I uh, put the top piece down, you see that I kind of uh, squish it and move it back and forth. This helps to kind of flatten the foam and get it to attach to the entire surface area. And another thing you see at the end here is I'm actually uh, screwing three inch screws at an angle into both pieces and this just helps to kind of uh, uh, tighten down the corners that are starting to pull up a little bit. This is another nice technique for uh, securing foam on foam. One thing you do have to look out for though if you are going to uh, file or saw or 
cut anything away. Um, you have to remember where the screws are. I added one more uh, piece of foam on top here just to make sure I have enough to get this little mound here. So two, four, six, eight inches in height to play with. Um, now we can start cutting the foam. So I wanna go over all the tools that I use for uh, foam cutting and carving, starting with uh, a couple of saws. This is a Japanese saw, nice thin blade, great for cutting foam, great for cutting wood. Um, slices through the foam super fast. Then we have this saw here. This is a hole saw, mainly used for sheetrock. The nice thing about this saw is the teeth are designed um, to cut both directions. So very aggressive blade, great for cutting foam. So the only downside to these saws are that they make a flat cut. Um, so it's good to kind of knock off the edges not so good if you have to come in here and kind of contour shapes. Then we have this tool here. This is an electric sander or polisher. Spins around real fast. Uh, this is kind of a rough uh, sanding pad. This is a great tool at the beginning stages um, because it can remove a lot of foam very fast. Uh, it's very aggressive. One thing, unlike the uh, saw blades, because this is round, you can really get in here and start to kind of uh, create your organic shapes. Um, the downside is this does make a big mess. But you can see that as this carves out, it really starts to kind of create a uh, landscape texture, which is nice. So one more electric option is to get these cool bits uh, and just put them on a drill. Uh, these work really well. They can uh, make some really nice texture. They remove the foam uh, very quickly and this is not as big as this. So you can start to create uh, shapes that uh, are a little bit more detailed. So this is the texture you could get with that. Uh, this is the texture you get with this larger one here. So now let's look at some hand tools. This is a super sharp wood rasp. Uh, I love using this to carve foam. You can really kind of like slide across these planes uh, and get a nice smooth curve. The downside is because it's this weird long shape, you can't really get these uh, super organic shapes. This is a tool that I just started using. It is a rake for uh, water clay and it's got these teeth on it here. I found that this works really nice if you're kind of carving out little valleys. Um, The teeth on this just really will grip the foam and, and kind of rip it apart very easily. These rasps right here, uh, I see a lot of artists use these tools for carving foam. I'm just not as into them as much as the rasp. Uh, so I will use this over this, but something you might want to check out. So one thing I really like about bead foam is it is just uh, condensed little beads of foam. So regardless of how big of a mess this makes, I'm never going to be creating some kind of bead dust that uh, gets in my lungs or uh, sticks to my clothes and, and makes me all itchy. That's something that definitely can't be said for all of the uh, more dense extruded polystyrene foams. The trade-off is with the bead foam, you could never really get uh, a lot of precise detail when you're carving, like you can on the uh, EPS foams. But for this process of just mocking up a really simple 
uh, ground plane here, uh, the bead foam is perfect. My favorite tool and technique, as you can see here, is that uh, bit on the drill. That bit is like some kind of like uh, super dense Brillo pad. Not even sure what it's for. I think like removing paint or something. But it really just shaves the foam away super easy. And by going back and forth with these uh, crosshatch patterns, I kind of feel like that's mimicking um, dirt and rock formations. You can see that I'll stop sometimes and brush it off and then redraw the topography of the little mounds. This just helps me keep an eye on where all of the uh, kind of bumps are. But I'm not really super obsessive about getting something to look uh, perfect. I have a general idea of what I want everything to look like and as I'm carving it just kind of starts to take shape. A lot of people like to use a hot wire to carve foam. Uh, that is a great tool. It doesn't make that much of a mess. Uh, you can get a lot of nice texture. I'm just not a fan of uh, breathing or smelling uh, melted plastic. Yes, you can wear a respirator to prevent that, but I just don't have any extra brain cells to chance on that. So that takes us to this point right here. Uh, there's a nice little mound for the tree goes into a little valley where the stilts are and then there's a few little mounds in the back just to break up the horizon line. So in the next video we're going to finish detailing the top. We are going to soak some burlap in a Elmer's glue and water mixture. Uh, we're going to lay it over the top here. That's going to give it kind of a nice uh, organic top coat. Uh, and then the final layer will be a water clay that is kind of uh, spread on top and then textured with a variety of tools. If you like this video, I would definitely appreciate it if you liked it or shared it or even left a comment below. Uh, all of that stuff helps YouTube's algorithm share it with a wider audience. Um, so that would be awesome. Thank you for watching.